Hey guys, Mark in the Pit here. I'm actually really excited today. I, uh, I found a great deal on Facebook, Facebook Marketplace. I found this Weber Smoky Joe. It's $3, three, $3, just three. I don't know what, I don't know what the deal was. It's it brand spanking new, never been used before. Uh, it was still in the box. I had to assemble it. I, 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 I couldn't pass it up, so <laughs> I've got it. Uh, once I got it, I was like, well, what am I going to do with this? I've already got a bunch of other stuff. So I'm going to do a fun project. I'm going to turn it into a mini Weber Smoky Mountain. Um, I saw a lot of great articles about that, and I just I want to do it myself. And uh, yeah, I just I think it'll be something fun to do. I've already got some of the uh, tools and stuff laid out, so we can go check that out. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and start building it. Here are a couple of things you need. Of course, the... Uh, Smoky Joe, uh, a tamale pot, a couple of uh, cold grates. A lot of people are using multiple cooking grates, but I don't, I'm only ever going to use one cooking grate. So uh, for what I'm going to do, two cold grates is the way to go for me. Um, some tape for masking stuff off, uh, some gloss enamel high temp paint. Uh, I've got two bits here. I've got a quarter inch and five sixteenths. Uh, this is for just about everything, all the bolts and, and everything. This right here is going to be for the thermometer. Now, I didn't get a big, fancy, expensive one. I mean, this is fine for what I'm making. So, and uh, I did uh, I did already calibrate it, check it. It was fine right out of the box. Uh, you're going to need uh, a marker, pencil. Um, I'm going to try and put this flame part of my my uh, logo onto the pot when I paint it. But we'll see how it turns out. Um, I've got an angle grinder here with a cutting blade on it. And then I've also got a grinding blade here that I'm going to use afterwards. Um, a lot of people I've seen drill the bottom out. I'm actually going to cut the whole bottom out because I want as much airflow as possible. I got some gloves here. But yeah, that's, that's pretty much all you'll need. Uh, if there's anything else, I'm sure you'll see it when I'm making it. All right, so the first thing I want to do is put some lines on the bottom here. I want to go in about, I don't know, maybe uh, an inch. That'll give me some, uh, some play room to make some mistakes. Doesn't need to be perfect. It's not like I'm going to cut a nice circle. Just needs to be close. That looks good enough. Let's go ahead and cut it open. It's actually throwing a little more uh, stuff in the air than I'd like to be breathing, so I'm going to put my air mask on. All right. All right. I think that's good enough. That is a hole in the bottom. That's for sure. All right. I should probably sand it down a little bit. See if sanding this down helps at all. All right. Well, not the prettiest hole I've ever seen, but I'd still use it. All right. So I've got the stencil in here kind of where I want it. Roughly. I mean, I'm sure I'm going to measure out where it goes but for the most part I just want to make sure that I don't put any of my holes um, around there so uh, we need to look into the great holes so we need to measure for those and we also need to measure for the heat deflector and we need to measure for the drip pan um, or water pan because I, I want to have a space for both of those separately I don't want to combine them and I don't want to stack them directly on each other. So um, first thing I'm going to do is measure how this sits on the grill itself because I want to make sure that I don't try and put one of these below where this would sit. I'm going to do three each. There, there, and there. 
so you're going to be my first one. Okay, so that's going to be the heat deflector. And I want the drip pan. I want to have at least at least two inches for the drip pan, and then at least another two inches for the actual cooking grate. All right, so that puts my cooking grate right around here. That give me about six and a half inches of depth, plus whatever is on the lid. Now, is that too deep? God, I don't know. Do I want to give myself four inches? Put the grate way up here, and that's only giving me it's only giving me five inches of depth. That's about seven total. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do seven inches. That way I can fit a turkey in there, no problem. I think that's the way I want to go. And I can always put another grate up here later on if I want. So I think I'm happy with that. All right, now I gotta get two more holes for each. I'm just gonna make sure I got my line somewhat straight here. All right. We're gonna measure the whole distance around. 44 inches, 44 and a half ish. We'll say 44. We'll say 44. That's close enough. All right. So what's 44 divided by three? 14.6. All right. So we'll do 14 and a half. All right. So 14 and a half is right there. I'm trying to find an even, an even spot on both sides of the center here. All right. I'm gonna roll with that. And one more straight in the back. So we got all our holes for the grates. Now we need to put in the thermometer. Where do we want that to go? We want that to go right around grate level. That would make sense. That's about meat high right there, right? I think that's a safe place to do it. But I'd like to have it like front and center though. But I'm not gonna do that. So yeah, it's gonna go right here, right in line with everything else. So we're just going meat high, not even gonna measure it. I'm sure there are more technical ways of doing that, but uh, kind of build stuff as I go. I don't really plan it all out too well. <laughs> so, anyways, um, I guess I can. Nah, I'm gonna go ahead and rip this off for now, because I'm gonna put tape over the whole thing and then make that a little more centered. All right, let's drill some holes. It's actually a lot easier and lighter than I thought it would be. So be careful if you're doing this that you don't push too hard when you start because you'll dent your pot. And also if you're working outside, put cardboard down so you don't scratch it up. And then one more for the thermostat. This one's a little bigger. Now the reason we're doing three holes instead of four is because it's easier to balance on three than it is four and you'll have less stuff It'll feel less like it's rattling around and more like it's a solid, a solid uh, built product. All right, let's make sure everything fits. And uh, yeah, so I'm literally gonna put this entire thing together and I, I want to see and make sure that everything fits perfectly like it's supposed to before I take the time to paint it. Because if it doesn't fit, if something doesn't fit right, I want to know now. Okay, we're going to put the big ones on the bottom. And we're going to put the smaller ones on the top for the bigger grates. Because the big grate doesn't really need a whole lot. In fact, the, uh, the ridge right here on the inside, the bigger grate actually sits on there perfectly. So if I were to do anything different, it would probably be to find a way to have this lower all the way at the bottom without interfering with the way it sits. And then I would just have a larger full-size grate sit on there naturally. All right, that's it. I've got everything screwed in. These are gonna be for handles. You can see how everything sits in there. These bolts seem to line up pretty close. I'm actually pretty happy with that. Yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with that. And then we'll have the logo right there when it's done. And when we actually have this thing in service, we'll have a charcoal grate here in the bottom. And I'm not putting anything in there to block the coals from falling out the chute. I don't want it, I want it as little as possible to block airflow. And if that starts clogging up, I'm just gonna jiggle the handle. I'll just keep an eye on it and jiggle the handle. 
Okay, so this fits on good. I've got just a tiny bit of a gap. I don't know if you can see that. I've got just enough gap right there. So I'm pretty happy about that. And we'll have the bottom grate. Which will hold the drip pan, or actually that one will hold the heat deflector. Right. I'm just going to have to pick up the thing here. So, turn this a little bit. There we go. Alright, so we've got the, uh, that's going to hold the heat deflector. This one's going to hold a drip pan. And these are these are on there solid. That's that's pretty cool. And then this one's gonna hold the food. And that's also on there pretty good. And that gives enough space for air to just flow through naturally. And I don't think we'll have any problems. I hope not. And then the lid goes on. And then this right here. Just gonna screw on like that, and I think I'm gonna put a piece of cork on there. I think that's what I want to do. I might need a longer one. Maybe I can make this work. Maybe I'll cut the cork. I think that's what I'll do. I'll cut the cork in half. That'll give me more, more length of the stem. So I don't know. We'll get there. So this is a good. This is a good start. All right. So first, I'm gonna drill this out. Now I'm just going to use a regular kitchen knife here and hope for the best. Last time I tried to do this, <laughs> I got six stitches on my knuckle right there. I was eight years old. But still. Yes, much better than last time. Yeah, I like that. I think that's going to be good. All right, now I need to try and drill a hole in this and on the bottom. Might have to bend the bottom one to make it work. I think I like that. How's that look on camera? Yeah, I think I like that. All right, let me see if I can do the bottom without messing anything up. I suppose I don't want to do this side because it's the front side facing me. And I think the only way I can do it is if I bend it down. Get that out of the way, I grab some pliers. Alright, let's hope I don't wreck this here. I'm putting a lot of pressure right here on the base instead of just trying to yank the whole thing. And I'm really not going to go any farther than I think I have to. I think that actually worked out all right. I don't think I caused any damage. I'll put this back together. There we go. Yeah, I am very happy with that. All right, well, the hard part's done. All the drilling's done. So I guess I'll just tape it off and uh, work on painting it now. I did some of the boring stuff. I went ahead and I taped everything up and I got my logo centered on there. And it, there was a little bit of a gap space underneath the um, handles here, so I just wedged it under as best as I could. Then I used a piece of junk mail to push it in to give me, you know, I'm, I'm trying to get straight lines, so hopefully that'll help. 
um, with the logo here, uh, I just kind of eyeballed it, got it close, and then I measured equal distances from the edge to the dots, so it was centered there. And then equal distance from here to here. Uh, when I first did it, I did from the top to the bottom, but then when I had it sitting in the, uh, like, on position the way it would be, it felt like this was just kind of off, like it was sitting down too far. Uh, but it did look right when it was centered in between here and here. So that's what I did. I've got two layers of tape under here, but basically I just made a big pad of tape under here. And then I just taped that in position on there. So basically all I'm going to do now is just kind of go through and trace this. And then I'm going to pull this off and then I'm going to use my X-Acto knife to cut the line that I made. And then pull off everything that's around it. So... Uh, only this part here that you see with tape is what's going to show through. And you're going to see the shiny metal uh, when I'm done. And so that part of the logo is going to be there. And hopefully it'll look pretty sharp. So I just wanted to walk you through that because it's going to be boring to watch. Uh, so, I don't know, it's probably already boring. I thought about doing the name part, but there's no way I can do that and have it look good. <laughs> I'm not that good. I mean, like, it might look good on camera, but... It won't look good in person, and I'm the one that's got to look at it. Sorry about the low light. I'm just anxious. So I'm going to start with this high heat um, flat. Uh, acrylic or let's see I'm going to start with this high heat uh, flat black this could be my base and then I'm going to finish it up with a high gloss hopefully that'll stick better we'll see Paint's dry to the touch. Uh, we're pretty much going to bake it here pretty soon. That'll help finish curing it. But I feel pretty safe in that uh, I can assemble it and uh, not have any problems. So let's go ahead and pull the tape off and see how that turned out. All right, is it perfect? No. Is it adequate? Yes. I am happy with it for myself. I don't think that I do a good enough job that I would want to ever try, <laughs> try and make these and sell them. Uh, but for this personal project for myself, this is more than okay. I mean, there, there are some things that I noticed that I'm not 100% happy with, but I'm happy enough with them. Like there are some spots Nobody shows you this stuff on YouTube. <laughs> they, they show it far away and you don't see all the little tiny mistakes. But there's things like under here where the tape I couldn't get out. And you can see here where the logo came off. There's like some uneven tear marks. And I know that's because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And I just kind of want to get it done so I can play with it. So, yeah, that's what it is. Um, this hole here... It's not perfect, but it is definitely adequate. Um, I'm, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. And uh, I think I'm going to enjoy using it. See, like right here, you can see I've got some ripples in the paint. That's, you know, it's not bad enough that I'm going to try and fix it, but it's something I notice. And uh, I'm sure it's something that everyone that has done this at home has come across. I can't imagine someone like myself going through all this and having it come out perfect, you know, but when they, when they pull the camera all the way back here and they're like, look how pretty it is. <laughs> These are the things that I noticed that I want you to see when you try this at home so that, you know, I don't want you to expect 
to have a showroom finish and be like, what, what the fuck happened? So, but anyways, uh, moving forward, um, for the insides, I'm gonna use this as an ash pan on the outside. I'm gonna use this as a drip pan on the inside. And I wanted to use a, uh, a pie tin for the heat deflector. I had a real nice one picked out, but my wife said no. No! So uh, I'm just gonna utilize the hole that I cut out um, as the heat deflector. I think it'll do enough of a job. I mean, it's not heavy, but it'll stop direct heat from coming up. And I don't, I definitely wouldn't need this, but I'm gonna use it anyways. I'm just gonna sit it on top of there. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because, I mean, it's a little more weight and metal in there, and uh, that can't be a bad thing. And also, uh, I think it'll last longer if, I, if it's in use. You know, if I just sit it in the corner somewhere, it's gonna rust and get funky. So, with that said, WSM Mini Assemble. So let's go ahead and put this thing together for reals to make sure we get everything on there good and tight this time. So then we'll put this in as the heat deflector. And that actually, that fits real nice in there. I mean, that, that looks great. All right, and then this will be for the drip pan. And we'll have the actual cooking grate just above that. And I think that gives everything enough room to breathe. That's not too deep that you can't reach in there and grab something. But it's deep enough that if I wanted to, I could add a second grade up here. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. And then for down, for down here, to catch more ash, I'm just gonna sit something like that there. That way, you know, if I need to empty it mid-cook, I can just pull it out and do it. And I don't have to worry about unscrewing something. I think that's gonna be more than adequate. And if I find that it's kind of windy out and it wants to blow around, I'll put a rock in it. And I'm just, I'm not going to overthink it. So that's it. Let's go ahead and light it up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that and get it smoking. I think that'll help cure the paint a little bit here on the outside. Uh, be the equivalent of baking it, I guess. So, yeah, I'm going to do that. I'll get it up to, I don't know, maybe 350 or so. And, uh, yeah, we'll just see how it holds temp. I'll let it go for, I don't know, a couple hours maybe see how it does and uh, we'll check back then yeah we can adjust the vents that's nice I like that I'm really happy with how that turned out cool all right so I've got some royal oak lump in here I'll put some of the bigger lumps on the bottom I'm getting towards the end of the bag so I don't have anything really big at this time but uh, I may do um, I'm going to light a fire in here the same way I do with everything else, just a wad of paper in the middle. Light it with my torch if it works, my out of fuel. Looks like it. Maybe I can get enough to. Yep. All right. So. <clears throat> when, the, when the sparks start flying, you're getting pretty close. I've got the vent on the bottom wide open. I'm just going to kind of pile these up a little more. I'm just going to keep that vent wide open. I'm going to sit this on top. Open this one all the way up. I'm going to let it roll for about, I don't know, four hours maybe. And uh, just try and keep a steady temperature. And burn off anything on the inside. If all goes well and uh, it stays hot, then... Uh, I'll probably throw some chicken wings on it or something tonight just, uh, just to kind of break it in. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll work out well. It really is neat. I'm, I'm pretty freaking excited about it and I'm really happy with how it turned out. All right, well, um, I guess this is it for now. I'll uh, probably add something later on. I'll let you know how it's working. This thing does get pretty hot like all over. 
the handles get hot, even the stems of these nubs get hot, the legs get hot, it gets hot. Um, but it seems to be holding a pretty consistent temperature. Um, my only issue today that I've seen with it so far, burning it, I mean, I've burnt this thing all day long, like 10 hours or more. And when you have the smaller coals, they seem to fall through the grates and then it goes out because you don't have that cluster of coals that are, you know, keeping it hot. So um, I started this again, I don't know, like 10 minutes ago. Got it up to heat quick, but I used larger uh, lumps. I like, I literally went out, I bought a new bag of uh, Royal Oak lump and I just started a new fire with giant pieces and that seems to be working out really great. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the first cook right now. I'm going to do uh, some chicken. I've got some, I've got some hot wings. Actually, you know what? Yeah, let's do it that way. All right. So I'm going to make some smoked wings and I didn't do anything special to them. Just salt and pepper. And uh, let's see, before I go and get dirty, let's go and look in here so you can see what I've got going on. Um, I've got a drip pan there. I'm not going to put anything in it. And then the heat deflector below that. And that's about it. Well, that's the coals. And once I get this chicken in here, I'm going to put the piece of wood on for smoke. That way I don't have a bunch of smoke just blowing in my face while I'm trying to put these in because that's that's not cool. So hopefully all that will drip into the drip pan and because the drip pan isn't sitting on the heat deflector it shouldn't all just burst into flames and boil and have a big smoky stinky mess. That looks good. It smells good. All right, I gotta get the lid on there before that all the coals catch on fire. <laughs> All right, so now I got the chicken in. Next step is putting the smoke in. And I'll put that. I'm actually going to put it right there over top of the fire. I'm okay with that. All right, so now we should have some smoke coming through. Now, one of the things I was agonizing over was I want to drill a second hole just below this thermostat and put a grommet in there so I can take this and just shove it in the hole. But there are times when I don't use a thermometer and then I just have a hole there that I have to worry about plugging. So I didn't do that. It's not to say that I won't do it, but as of now, it's not done. I just I think that would be cool to be able to plug it in and then I'm good to go as far as temps. Now, the alternative that I talked myself into was just dropping it in this hole. And yeah, it works, but it's not as cool. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this clip on it. And then it should never fall any farther in the hole than that. I can live with that for right now. Maybe I'll use like a paper clip or something, or maybe a metal clip from like a, an office supply thing. There we go. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, I put that hunk of wood in there, and that was just too much wood for this little smoker. I mean, it was, it was throwing out so much smoke, it was disgusting. So I had to, uh, I took the top, like, I took the whole base off and I used a pair of tongs and I just, I took the piece of wood out. It was too much. I think moving forward, I'll use chips in here. I, I think that's the way to go. Now I am having some issues with the bottom vent clogging up, but I think that if I put a piece of expanded metal on the bottom grate, that that will solve the problem. Uh, Cause it's just, it's like chunks about yay big that are clogging up the hole um, in the bottom. So the expanded metal would definitely stop that. 
Now, as for the, uh, I found the clip that I was looking for. Uh, so I, had, I don't have to use the clothespin anymore. Uh, as far as the way the wings are looking, they're, they're actually turning out pretty good. I've been spraying them with the 50-50 apple cider vinegar, apple juice mix, and it smells pretty good. Uh, before too long here, I'm going to uh, go ahead and cover them in barbecue sauce, but I think all in all, it's, it's a pretty good first round. What I did is, um, like, I would have coals get stuck in this little hole here, so I wouldn't be able to open and close the grate, or I, wouldn't, I wasn't able to open and close the vents because there'd be, like, a chunk of coal stuck in it, and it would just kind of lock it up. So what I did is I took some expanded metal and I just cut it to kind of fit and then I wow. hammered it around so that it just stays on there. And now, I mean, even little tiny pieces like that are not going to fall through and clog it up. So I think, I think that's going to be a good addition that will solve problems with uh, airflow. And then I can use the smaller coals and that won't be an issue um, when I get towards the bottom of a bag. So yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run it like that. Uh, once or twice and see if that treats me any better and I'll let you know